Okay, hypertension. Um, we will talk briefly about hypertension. We will touch base on hypertension every time it will come again in the case of MI or if there's the renal problems. But I'm um, just going to cover the major concept of it here. Now, remember we, we, we talked earlier that uh, the blood pressure depends on the cardiac output and systemic vascular resistance, and every factor of these depends on a lot of other things. For example, cardiac output depends on heart rate and depends on the contractility and the conductivity. So, I'm, not, what I'm trying to say is the blood pressure problem could be in any of these areas. Also, systemic vascular resistance depends on the adrenergic receptors, so um, this could mean also neuro, uh, more activation that could also lead to blood pressure. Also, it depends on the regulation of within the blood vessels, so the endothelium, for example, within uh, endothelial injury, which can narrow the blood vessels and cause vasoconstriction, eventually can cause high blood pressure. Uh, prostaglandins also can, can, can do that. Also, the kidneys are so important also. Blood pressure could be a, res a result of a long-term kidney function problems, and also kidney failure can result from blood, high, blood high blood pressure. We talked in farm about the renin angiotensin and the whole RR, RAAS um, system. Okay, so in other words, blood pressure could be high cardiac output, which results from high contractility, it could be from high fluid return, from high overload, or could be the problem within the blood vessels. Now, there are two mainly, uh, the, uh, as far as numbers, the category is uh, any number between, we say the normal blood pressure is 120 over 80. Any from 190, sorry, 180 to 139, that's called prehypertension, or and or if the diastolic is above 80 or between 80 to 89, stage 1, 140, 159, or 90 to 99, and stage 2, anything above, whenever the diastolic is uh, higher, equal or higher than 160, or the diastolic is equal or higher than 100. Now, just simply the difference between the primary and secondary, and primary, we just, we, we don't know. I mean, we have some theory, but we don't know the exact cause of it. Okay, while the secondary is the cardiovascular was intact, but it could be anything um, uh, uh, other than the cardiovascular system. For example, aging is one of these problems. Again, aging has to do mainly with the changes in the blood vessels and, of course, the myocyte itself. Um, in case of endocrine, the insulin resistance can lead to uh, cardiovascular problems. Again, it all, all of it goes down to the endothelial, the inner layer of the blood vessels. The aging, the endothelial will, uh, there's high chance for energy and changes as far as part of aging. With the insulin resistance, um, that means that the glucose will be high and high glucose level, like in diabetes, um, attacked the and our layer, the endothelium. So, and whenever the endothelium is inflamed, that means vasoconstriction, which will increase the blood pressure. As far as obes obesity, especially if it has to do with uh, high lipids, again, that will affect, that will cause atherosclerosis, again, affecting the endothelium. If there's a problem with kidneys and there's, a ma is, there's no good uh, balance of uh, water excretion and absorption, and uh, ret retention of sodium as a result also, then that will increase the venous returns and increase the work of the heart and then can lead to high blood pressure. Could the problem also could be within the heart, especially after MI. The um, over uh, stimulation of the central nervous system can affect the vasodilation and vasoconstriction of the blood vessels and affect the systemic vascular resistance and that will also increase the blood pressure. Um, inherited also this this uh, problem could be secondary to just um, family history environmental and emotional uh, stress also can increase that has direct effect to the CNS and then to the uh, blood vessels and also the gender can make a big difference okay the risk factors uh, basically, it depends, uh, based on the explanation of the etiology, you can tell now the risk factor could be, again, with age, uh, the risk for heart, heart hypertension increase, uh, alcohol and consumption, uh, smoking, diabetes, um, all these factors can increase the risk for hypertension uh, by affecting one 
or more of the mechanism that regulates the blood pressure. Okay, so now the clinical manifestation of hypertension. Hypertension is called the silent scalar because usually patients are asymptomatic. Patients start to show, to show symptoms whenever when the blood pressure is severely high, like above 160. And so they, you know, these are the common symptoms like fatigue and dizziness and palpitations and angina, chest pain, dyspnea, all this as a result of increase in the blood pressure, but usually it's silent. Okay, the major thing is the patient that you need to teach your patient is increase in the, um, and it's a complication that is induced by the high blood pressure. Mainly, mainly had to do with blood vessels in these different organs unable to tolerate the high blood pressure that's coming from the, from the heart. For example, cerebral, cerebral um, arteries and veins, if there is a continuous high pressure, this continuous high pressure will keep adding pressure to the endothelial and that can lead to endothelial um, injury, may lead to aneurysm at the beginning and then the aneurysm may rupture and cause cerebral bleeding and stroke. The same thing for the retina and for the kidneys. These two organs they have and the peripheral vascular muscles, they have small arteriolos. These small arteriolos, they don't take high pressure. A prolonged high pressure or unmanaged or um, unmanaged hypertension can lead for these arteriolos to rupture as a result of continuous high pressure. Also, the muscles of the heart can take the pressure for some times, but if the blood pressure is not managed, then these muscles will hypertrophy and the patient will develop heart failure as a result of that. Now, the management, uh, definitely we talked about the risk factors, so we always want to start with the prevention, but the management of the blood pressure, um, definitely we want to encourage your patient to monitor. Unfortunately, many of patients with high blood pressure, they don't even check their blood pressure. So that's something you want to tell your patient always to monitor their blood pressure periodically. As far as the nutrition, again, salt and sodium, you know, the relationship between sodium and water, more sodium, that means more water retention, which will increase the blood volume and that will increase the blood pressure. Reduction of weight has to do with also decreasing the lipids. Uh, cholesterol, avoid, basically avoid any uh, risk factors or, or factors. Activities, uh, smoking cessations, uh, alcohol moderation, and definitely uh, the uh, reduction of stress, especially the psychological stress. And then the major, of course, major management is the antihypertension medication, and it's always covered in pharmacology, and uh, you can refer to my lecture and farm about the medication for blood pressure. But these medications, this is the different way that they, they work, as I said. Um, it depends on the mechanism, uh, whether it's a, because if it's a, a neuro activation of uh, blood vessels, we can give medication to decrease that. Um, if it's something within the heart, we can give beta blockers. If it's something in the, in the kidneys, we can give ACE inhibitors. And also, you can relax the muscles with the calcium channel blockers. And you can also give the aerotics to decrease the blood volume. And so on. Now, the elderly, they have some changes that put them at risk for hypertension. And these are the changes, the common changes that as a result of the aging process that increase the risk for high blood pressure in this patient. Now, patient education, it all has to do with uh, moderation and modification of the risk factors. You can read, you can read through this um, in the book.